Hey everybody, today we are going to be taking apart the screen of a Toshiba Libretto FF uh, series laptop. Um, a very common problem with these screens is they either get vinegar syndrome, which is exactly what this one has, or had, or in the future. Um, they also get red lines, vertical red lines, down usually on this side, but sometimes in the middle too. Um, these screens are actually shared with the Toshiba Libretto 100 series. Uh, they're 7.1 inch sharp screens. Uh, I can't remember the exact model number, but if I can remember to put it in, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, so yeah, it's uh, usually required to open these up and replace the screens, uh, unless you're very lucky. So yeah, this is for all the people who want to know how to uh, get into these things. It's important to note that when you take apart the display of the Loretto, um, there is like a basically 100% chance that you are going to break these corners off. This one's already started and hasn't even been removed before, um, but there's basically little clips that hold this in place and uh, unfortunately they're very weak and uh, they will break. We're gonna start by heating up these two little stickers here. There's one there and one there. And then what I'm gonna try and do is basically just push them around like that to get them loose. very difficult to see but there is a very thin layer between the crystal glass part and where this little film polarizer is and that's what we want to try and re remove we want to try and remove the this little plasticky part here this matte piece um, I guess I suggest trying a razor blade, but I'm going to try doing, and I haven't seen anyone else try this, but I want to try heating this up a bit to see if that helps us a little bit. So without further ado, let the fun begin. So I started from this corner and I was unsuccessful, uh, but I tried this corner and I just very, very carefully used a, bla a razor blade to try and lift this up and it looks like I was successful. So I'm going to heat this up a little bit more and we will peel the rest of this off.
Alright, I got the polarizing layer off. And let me tell you, this smells horrible. It's basically like having uh, vinegar in your hands or something. I don't know. This is really nasty though. I'm going to throw this out and wash my hands. Ugh. So you can see the screen is now dirty. It has some stuff on it. What we're going to do is we're going to clean this with um, isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol, whatever. That's what was recommended. So that's what I'm going to use. And uh, we'll come back once this is all cleaned up. All right, so I got rid of all of the um, old residue. You may notice there's a ton of spots on here and, and that's normal for me. This is symptomatic of using a very old microfiber cloth that has been used and washed multiple times. Um, I'm ultimately going to have to go over this once more with some rubbing alcohol and a brand new microfiber cloth. Um, but until then, I've cleaned it up. I actually ended up having to use Goo Gone because it just would not come off with the rubbing alcohol stuff. Um, now I don't know if this is really safe to use on this kind of thing, but I do know that it leaves behind a residue so no matter what, you will have to go over your screen once you get rid of the, uh, the, the adhesive. You'll have to go over, over it a couple times with rubbing alcohol to make sure you get rid of all that Goo Gone stuff, otherwise the application of the polarizing film will probably not be successful. You can also see right here on the left hinge we have a nice crack spanning right there. Let me see if I can show you guys. There you go. See it right there? When I open the laptop you can really see it. If we flip this over you'll see it right there. This is very common for these librettos and uh, <clears throat> There's nothing you can really do about it. Um, it just seems to be a, a design de uh, defect, I guess. One thing I would suggest trying, though, is taking a very, very, very thin layer of JB Weld and opening up the crack like such, lathering a very, very, very thin layer of JB Weld in there, just super thin, and get it spread around here a little bit too, and then closing it back up like that and then leaving it like that for about 24 hours or so. I feel like that would probably fill in the hole and distribute some of the stress caused by this hinge. Um, but I haven't tested that and I intend to test it but I haven't done it yet. This is how I did it. I opened it up and lathered a very thin layer of JB Weld on there and I kind of lathered it around the post as well where that screw goes in. and. Um, yeah, well, I guess we'll see what happens. So it's been a couple days since the install. Um, I didn't film that because that required a lot of patience and I, I couldn't have a camera in my way and stuff, but it came out very, very nicely, I, I believe, anyways. Um, I might, if I can remember, throw some pictures up, but initially we had some air bubbles, like one there, one down there, and three here. And with some pressure, and some heat and just letting it sit for a couple days or do keep in mind I did massage the bubbles once every day and then use some heat uh, but otherwise doing that there, there's nothing it it came out really really well I'm actually surprised at how well it came out so it was actually relatively straightforward to do you just have to make sure you have a brand new microfiber cloth to really clean your screen and get all the debris out of it just as proof that this did work, you'll see me turn it on real briefly here. But as you can see, everything's perfect. No more vinegaring on the display. And this isn't my other display that has a red line down it. So it works very well. Um, this is a really good way to revive the screens and prevent them from being thrown out. But there you go. Perfect. Thanks for watching.